because you're all, almost invulnerable to uh, any sort of harass. Yeah, it's a very good lane dominator, like what I mentioned before. His characteristics as a mid player itself, like he definitely likes to roll over the opponent with just by just out laning and out farming him, like mm -hmm. the opposition. So that definitely is a very good way of utilizing what they have uh, on CTY. I'm curious yeah. if you're gonna see a witch doctor this game. Uh, so far, DDC has been kind of countered. Uh, both Dazzle, that he's played in most of the games, uh, panned out as well as the Rubik. I wouldn't mind seeing him on the Witch Doctor. So far, it seems to fit. Yeah, it might actually be that case because they, they ban up Wyvern. It means that they want to go for maybe he very heavy physical damage mm -hmm. type of yeah. lineup. Undying made it through. Yeah, Undying makes it through <laughs> and does get picked up. Yeah, I mean, now just given so m that we have so many heroes with the high priority, we always kind of slip by one of yeah. them and they, they do show up again. What do you make of the PL ban? I mean, we saw, especially during the wildcard plans, we saw a lot of PL being picked and banned. Mm. Then not so much here as we entered the group stage. Might actually mean that they want to go five-man thick towers that raises up plus undying now, and they do not want to deal with like split push. But mm. of course, there's still anti mage. There's still like maybe even a tinker that EG occasionally picks up to deal with five man. But the other reason will probably be because PL is one of the I would say better heroes. Like you can doppelganger in a fight to kill the tombstone, like to focus it easier. That might be the reason as well. Okay. But it's clear E Home want to fight now. <laughs> they want to take the fight to EG, take towers, take objectives, and group up. Now, I'm not sure if this game was on the main stream yesterday EG VG Gaming with a Enchantress yeah. offlane. It was, right? Yeah. How situational is that? Because how, how will it fit? Can it fit into this lineup? If Razor is safe lane, then maybe. It was a max untouchable one, and yeah. versus certain heroes, I, it is very situational. Yeah, yeah. First of all, it's and more <laughs> based on the supports that the opponent have, yeah. right? He has to be able. She has to be able to, you know, out harass them. She is actually very mobile. She has a very high uh, move speed okay. at level one. And if you have a train protector, she's certainly a lot better. I mean, having the ice armor this game against the physical damage is definitely very we very. We saw helpful. this from. Uh, it was uh, was with uh, Cloud9, yeah, Cloud9, yeah. Cloud9 today. Misery played Lich. They, they won that game as well. I right. Hmm. Can't forget against who though. So they're going to have a very good dual lane with the Lich. Uh, I'm not really sure what they're going to pair it with. Well, talking about fighting, Ehome going with the Spirit Breaker and Storm Spirit. Yeah, it's also. the classic bounty storm that EG likes to use like, a lot and they're going back towards the Queen of Pain on Fear, I want to say, but at the same time, I'm thinking if they have Lich, they could possibly lane Lich plus Queen of Pain as your dual, dual lane on the off lane. That, that, that lane was, will be able to pressure, I think, a lot as well if it's uh, a Razor on a safe lane or a Bloodseeker on a safe lane. So that might be a route that EG would want to go for. There are options basically right now for them. And they put Storm top and still have uh, something I mean, Storm else mid, I guess. But then again, that's the bounty hunter earlier would actually mean might actually be mean that the lich would also go can also go with the bounty hunter as a dual lane too. So there are definitely a lot of options that EG can like go go for right now. Eon, quite a few options as well. Undying Spirit Breaker. This is the C deck favorite. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I mean, we we talked about it so much on Sunday during the wildcard plans, and then uh, it's been some time since we've seen that combo come out. But. Unkillable, or at least. Very difficult to kill. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> durable. Very yeah, durable. Very yes. durable indeed. Disruptor's last man from EG. Tusk does make it all the way through in E-Home. are just taking that out of the pool. I'm not seeing chances right there. So, what's, is E-Home lacking anything distinctly, given their plan? Fighting support with hopefully a disable, maybe. How about Shadow Shaman? Because I feel like they're also lacking some push. Yeah, something that fits the lineup, which in the sense that you want to push and take towers. Yeah. Yeah, I think EG's team fight is actually a little bit weak right now. Storm not the best. Bounty Hunter is okay. Lich is only good if you have a, like a lot of wave clear. Uh, I think that Ehome can heavy commit to five man pushes, and EG might be in a little bit of trouble just because they don't have a good delay tactic or uh, super reliable late game carry. Um, I think if Ehome commits to like another team fight pusher sort of thing, mm -hmm. they need something like Phoenix or uh, I mean even the stable clockwork I think is fine with them. Right on. I mean if Ehome goes with the Shadow Shaman, we saw this similarly yesterday, right? I, 
that's gonna spell some trouble if he has to just start splitting and then Storm shows up, Bounty shows up. Uh, it sounded like it might be some trouble, but they're gonna go with Lion. Yeah, it's so. very directed towards the Storm. Like, you wanna have a disable that you can mm -hmm. actually reliably use on the Storm all the time when he jumps around. And we always talk about, okay, then you have a Lion, you know, <laughs> the lane is bad. But in the game right now, Ehom has a core that is very good in the laning phase which is the Razor, like their carry. Mm -hmm. So that sort of balances out that Lion is very weak in the lane. So I could actually see that the Lion having a good time pulling, getting levels, and later on get a dagger to counteract the Storm Spray in the team fights. Okay. Uh, what about for EG then? You guys discussed it briefly. They do seem to be lacking in the department of really having a solid team fight overall. I'm surprised Clockwork is still in the pool because I think it'd be pretty good. And Universe Clockwork is uh, very strong. Yeah, but they are all durable targets ex except True. the lion. So you are hooking into a lot of you know meat shields. I but guess. perhaps you can at least stop the bus seeker from running. That it's could be something. Definitely an option. At the same time, they are kind of lacking on the disable part. If you mm -hmm. want to try to stop blood seeker from running and have something else to do that oh. with, I mean, it's been a while. Clock. AG, definitely, I mean, one of the times we have... Ooh, well, Sand King, I mean, we've been they, mentioning Sand King time and time again whenever we see these kind of scenarios. Well, Sand King definitely available. Teams haven't really been bringing it out so much, but Ben, how do you feel about Sand King finally showing? I think Sand King is actually really strong and underpicked. Uh, he has heavy AoE, there's a lot of melee heroes, and if you can catch Bloodseeker with Blood Rage on with an Epi, the fight is just over. And uh, against a yeah. team that likes to, uh, you know, fight a lot and you know push towers Sand King is probably one of the best picks there is yeah, all right it's a lot of synergy with the draft as well i feel like when you're dealing against an opponent that has very strong five men to push your towers you have to have a very good team fight composition because he's going to be they're going to be knocking on your towers you want to have very good team fight so you can actually defend our towers by fending them off or, or wiping them so at the moment they have lich ultimate plus sanking ultimate which has a lot of synergy together sanking ultimate will clear out all the crit wave and that will set up for a very good Lich Ultimate to land. All right, well, EG does round it out just fine with that last hero pickup of Sand King. We'll see if they can make it work. It is EG versus Ehome. Ehome really hungry for that 2-0. We'll find out if they can make that come true. Especially good this game. And if you look at Ehome's lineup, actually, they don't have the best tower aggressors. Like, EG can just hold on forever by just baiting them into getting further and further. And then Universe, if he gets a Blink Dagger, there's just the potential for absolute chaos there. And so I really like EG's lineup. And I'm not just saying that because I think they'll win this game, but I think their lineup is really well balanced. And I expect Sumail to have a good game. Like, if Sumail has a good game here, then EG, it, they should be able to snowball off of this. Because look at Ehome's draft. Like, they have really greedy supports. Lion is a hero that has to get a Blink Dagger to succeed against a Storm Spirit. And it looks like he's going to have to play a five position Lion to begin with. Want to welcome everybody in from the stream now, who's now tuning in to our commentary. I'm sure the beautiful panel that we have, the beautiful people there, gave some very professional analysis on the draft. Blitz and I had a much more fun time during our draft, but if you want it the does real end talk, up exactly what you were yeah. talking about. What, what's the real talk? Blitz? If you want the real talk, just listen to our draft analysis. <laughs> <laughs> yes, if you want the real talk, if you ever want to hear Blitz and I. Just listen to us during the drafting phase when we're on the mainstream. Yeah, we do some clown stuff, but... All right, so EG... Okay, I, I think that you put PVD in the off, regardless of what happens. I guess Veer is better suited for top, just because he has Blink, right? And there's mm -hmm. no reliable stun from Ehome. Yeah. But he's he's still going to struggle in this matchup. Like, and Dying is just such an annoyingly powerful hero. Yeah, and it's just the danger of the Spirit Breaker. Like, even if you blink away, um, if he's charging you, like, he's going to be able to charge you underneath that tower. So you've got, really got to be careful with the constant harassment of the end dying. And as he brings you lower and lower, Spirit Breaker just may make that full committal. And it's not like tower is even that much of a savior, because Spirit Breaker has such high effective HP versus physical damage. Yeah, and Sumail actually, uh, he's the type of player that's just going to get in CTY's face and spam out that, uh, that spell right here. And he knows that CTY can't see us from this range. And look, he's just giving him the right click nonstop. Like, I think oh, he even got the right there. Yeah, he almost overcommitted there. They, they, that was a really good play from Sumail, reading that opportunity, knowing, okay, he's going to come back. He really needs this last hit, but if he actually misses it, I can easily get the kill. Sumail is going to drop him once again. CTY is just being forced to burn through these tangos and is missing so much CS in the meantime. 
Yeah, this is why the matchup is so difficult. If the Storm just decides to play up on you at all times, it's really hard for the Bloodseeker to respond with anything. And mm -hmm. you notice that Sumel doesn't even bother going for denies or anything like that. He's just trying to pressure him as much as possible. Like, he steps forward like that, even if he has no kill potential, just to zone him out. And uh, enough about the intricacies of the Storm Spirit matchup, because nobody cares about that. But uh, the ward actually gets eaten. All right, this is just like a ward eating frenzy at bottom. They just, like, traded sentries like crazy. That was really weird. AUI is still sticking around. This is the, the thing that we are talking about earlier, is that the Bounty Hunter being able to put pressure on the support so easily, especially in dual lane scenarios. So now that they've killed all the counter vision, DDC is going to have a difficult time dealing with this. BPD is actually going to run into him and will be able to get a lot of right-click damage, but of course with the Razor coming over, he has to still play careful. This does leave the Queen of Pain solo up in the, or the top lane, as we were talking about before, our Spirit Breaker. Actually find an invis rune, so maybe they can find an opportunity to go on fear. He's only sitting on 435 max HP right now. Yeah, and he's really struggling against this lane, and we expected that though, right, to begin with, because watch the first hit bash. Him dying, uh, no 17%. <laughs> There's no way he would have to bash him like four times, and then fear would have to blink within vision to continue the charge. Like, it's really unlikely they kill him, but being annoying, yeah, they can accomplish that really easily. Samael, gonna do some bottle crowing here, just really ensure he can keep the pressure up on CTY. As you can see, CTY is multiply dropping down below. And I think a big part of this is, again, what we talked about earlier, is the fact that no one from the side lanes of Evil Geniuses is dropping any HP. Yeah, and it's more just that um, CTY can't get enough creeps in a row to be able to get CS. And now you're seeing the advantage, 18 CS to 7. If you're a Storm, you want at least, like, getting 30 by 5 minutes means that you're guaranteeing yourself if you want it, treads and a bottle by the time nighttime is halfway over, meaning that pretty much everybody is within kill range for you. Oh, nice. Samael just got that deny on CTY. He was he was going for the blood right kill on the creep. Top lane, they make it a big dive, and they will be able to pick up the oh, first mid blood. as well. Nice pick up, and CTY also dies in middle. Samael's able to force that one out. Oh, Rough boy. time for these lanes. Samael now brings back his bottle. CTY is just I, completely stuck out of this now. With Samael about to pick up his level 6, I'm not sure how he's ever going to be able to pick up more CS. Do you think that like a health potion would have actually made a difference there for the Bloodseeker in the laning phase and being able to rapidly get up to full HP? Because what you were saying there is like he couldn't get enough CS in a row to be able to continue his snowball. You're basically saying he couldn't get up the full HP, right? And In order to make sure he felt comfortable every CS pushing forward. I is that part of that, the Tango, the slow buildup of HP from Tango just isn't good enough? No, I think it more has to do with the fact that CTY is getting hit by too many remnants. Like, it's not even like the activation time is too short for you to dodge it. Like, it's just hitting him too many times. And I know we're, I'm focusing a lot on this mid matchup, and it's not just because it's a Storm Spirit. It's more just the fact that CTY has now died in a one-on-one -on -one matchup that you shouldn't die in. Like, in most 1v1 matchups, you shouldn't. And, this is going to make him struggle really hard in uh -oh. RTK's mid now, though. This is a little awkward. Uh, Samael does get hit the silence. They do pick up the kill before AUI can actually stop it with the Burrow Strike. And now with three heroes and the Vision, they'll get on top of AUI for a double kill. CTY, that was huge. A great rotation now from Ehome that now puts CTY in a much better position he was just 30 seconds prior. So Evil Genius is just a little bit too late on their rotations to save their mid. Meanwhile, the top lane, bottom is perfectly fine to stay solo against Fear as the Undying. How's that bottom lane going, though? We haven't really uh, talked too much about that. It's been the Lich just bringing the lane back constantly for Universe's Sand King. Still, though, YJ is getting, uh, it seems, a decent amount of farm. 15-1. You've got to count those free denies from the Lich in there, so his CS really isn't bad. 